I am here with free response question two, and just like the free response question one, I'll be teaching you how to deal with any FRQ two in particular instead of pertaining to the question that we have right here. So let's move ahead without wasting time. Now I have a sample question with me right here. It says on the initial day of sales t equal to zero for a new video game, there were forty thousand units of the game sold that day 91 days later which is t equal to 91 there were 76000 units of the game sold that day the number of units of the video game sold on a given day can be modeled by the function g given by g of t is equal to a plus b times ln of t plus 1 where g of t is obviously the number of units sold in thousands on day d since the initial day sale now the first question is Use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values of constants a and b in the expression for g of t. Now, in your FRQ2, I will guarantee you that you will have two values, one at t equal to some number x and one at t equal to some number y. Immediately, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the two given numbers of t, underline them as I have done here and underline their corresponding outputs. So, t equal to 0 corresponds to 40,000 and t91 corresponds to 76,000. Underline them immediately and underline the function that you have. g of t is equal to a plus b times ln of t plus 1. Now, since you have two, you have the input and the output, you can just put them in. So, if I start with g of 0, since I have t0 given, I have a plus b times ln of 0 plus 1, that would be 1. And the second thing that I have is 91. So I have g of 91 is equal to a plus b times ln of 92 since it is t plus 1. And that's it. Just figure out where your given values are, figure out which values they want. And you'll have only two of them and there will be no confusion. Put them in your function and get two equations. And that's all you need to write. To score full credit on this first part. Now in the second part of FRQ2, they will ask you to find the values of A and B as a decimal approximation. Now if you notice the first equation, what is ln of 1? To what power can you raise E, the rational number, to get to 1? And we all know that if we, if we raise any real number to the power 0, then we would get 1. So this would essentially be a plus b times 0, since ln of 1 is 0, is equal to 40, and b times 0 is 0, so we get a is equal to 40. Now we have one value, you put a is equal to 40 in the second equation, we have 40 plus b times ln of 92 is equal to 76. I move 40 to the other side to get 36, and I send the ln to the other end. So I have b is equal to 36 over ln of 92. Now, since you have the graphing calculator, you quickly pull out a calculator, plug in the numbers, and get the value 7.961. Up to three places, it's fine. But not in every case will you have a natural logarithm turning to zero. We were lucky in this case that we had ln of 1, which is essentially 0. But what if instead of what if instead of ln of 1, this might take a moment. Yeah. But what if instead of ln of 1, I had two different sets of equations. If I had a plus b times ln of 3 is equal to 40 and a plus b times ln of 92 which is equal to 76 what would you do in this case now feel free to pause the video and answer it yourself before i discuss it i hope you're done now when you are given two equations into variables then there is a common method of solving them which is called the method of elimination. In the method of elimination, you essentially add or subtract two equations to get rid of one variable. 
so that so that you get a new equation in one variable which can be easily solved in this case if you notice if i subtract the first equation from the second one this is my equation one and this is my equation two if i subtract the first equation from the second one if i have equation two minus equation one then i will get rid of a because one of these a's will have a negative sign which will essentially get rid of one variable so i can write that down i'll have the second equation first so it'll be a plus b times ln of 92 minus a since the negative sign goes into the entire bracket minus a minus b times ln of 3 and i have on the right hand side 70 minus 46. now if you look at it we have a positive a and a negative a so i'll cut off the negative and positive a and if i take the b common out of here i have b times ln of 92 ln of 92 minus ln of 3 76 minus 40 would be 36 now i have b is equal to 36 over i move the entire ln my ln of 92 minus ln of 3 to the other hand i have ln of 92 i don't know what's wrong with my line ln of 92 minus ln of 3 and if you plug in the values in the calculator i will get yeah i will get b is equal to 10.516 and once you have the value of b you can plug this back into any one of your equations you like probably take the smaller one plug in the value of b and similarly get the value of a so this was a method in which you eliminate one variable and then you find out the other variable if i had a negative a in like maybe if i had a negative a instead of a positive a in one equation then i will add the two equations to get rid of the a all right if i had a 2a and a 3a over here both of them positive then what i'll do is that i'll multiply the first equation by 3 to get a 6a and i'll multiply the entire second equation by 2 to get 6a and then i can follow the same procedure where i subtract equation 1 from equation 2. i hope that was very clear to you you may get different numbers and different values in your ap test so i essentially wanted to prepare you for that Now in part B subpart 1, they want us to use the given data to find the average rate of change of the number of units of video game sold in thousands per day from t equal to 0 to t91 days. Now we know that the average rate of change is change in y upon change in x. Now we know the corresponding y points would be g91 minus g0 upon the respective x coordinates would be 91 minus 0. We know g of 91 was 76 and g of 0 was 40 and 91 minus 0 is 91. So this is 36 over 91 which if I put in a calculator evaluates to 0.395. So you'll write that the average rate of change of number of units of video game sold in thousands per day from t is equal to 0 to 91 is 0 0.395 or you could just write that the average rate of change is 0 0.395 thousand units per day that was a very simple question now in part two they want us to use the average rate of change found in one found in subpart 1 to estimate the number of units sold on day t equal to 50. Now whenever you are concerned with the rate of change and they ask you to find the corresponding y value of an x coordinate on the graph then you must remember the slope formula which is change in y y minus y1 upon change in x which is essentially the slope of the graph. Now before you start plugging in values you might want to clear which values are what so we know that our 
y is something weird to figure out and the corresponding x since since we're figuring out would be t which is 50 all right so we want to find out what the y value is for x equal to 50 and when i choose my y1 and x1 i want you to take note that whether you take t of 91 and 91 or whether you take t of 0 and 0 they will give the exact same answer they might vary a bit in decimal approximations but at the end of the day it does not matter so i recommend that you go with the lower value that way you're not prone to calculation mistakes so i'll take y1 to be 40 for the corresponding x coordinate to be zero since we know that at t equal to zero the production was 40,000 units now that we have all our variables we'll plug in them so i have y which is still y minus y1 which is 40 upon i have t as 50 minus 0 which is supposed to be the slope now from part 1 we know that the slope we know that the slope was what was our slope 0 0.395 three decimal approximations are fine so if i move 50 to the other side and i add 40 i get y is equal to 0 0.395 times 50 plus 40 all right and if you take out your calculator and start putting in the values you will get 59.780 yep that is what your answer would be if you took t of 91 and 91 it would still give the same answer i guess and the reason why you can't use a calculator to just graph using your rate of change and then putting in x equal to 50 because we're supposed to show the work that leads to our answer and that is why you need to calculate the slope and then put in the values to get this entire thing i hope that was clear let's move ahead now the third and final part is let a of t or at represent the estimate of the number of units sold using the average rate of change found in part one for a50 found in part two it can be shown that it can be shown that a50 is less than the actual value which is g50 explain why in general at is less than g of t for all t for t in the interval 0 to 91 now whenever you get this question i want you to immediately open the calculator now once you open the calculator i want you to go to the top left button which is the graphing one and you will input your function which is a plus b times ln of t plus 1 you'll put in the values of a and b which we already know 40 and 7.961 and again accurate to three digits is more than enough three decimal places is more than enough you put in l times ln of x plus one and when you graph it i have set the window accordingly you'll notice that if you start tracing the graph if you trace the graph from you know zero till 91 <coughs> where is my point 91 yeah so if you graph it till here and the second line is the line that connects both of the point so i don't have a pen with me right now but the point which is on the y-axis the y-intercept and the point which is on my cursor right now if you join both of them then the entire line lies below the graph i repeat the entire second line lies below the graph and since we know that what we estimate using the average rate of change is on the secant line but the actual part is rather on the graph so whatever you estimate for the interval 0 to 91 the secant line always lies below the actual graph so your estimate always lies below the actual graph now i'll show you how we can write it formally now i will show you how you can actually write your answer i have written it already we go like the estimate at is the y coordinate of a point on the secant now because the graph is concave we have to mention the keywords okay the keywords here would be secant uh, because the graph is concave the secant is below the graph on the interval it is by the definition of a concave graph that we know that if the secant line is below the graph then it is a concave graph and 
yeah the secant is below the graph on the interval 0 to 91 therefore uh, in general a t is less than g of t for all t belonging to the interval 0 comma 91 0 to 91 let's move on to the third and final part time for the third and final part the makers of the game reported that daily sales of the game decreased each day after t equal to 91 explain why the error in the model g increases after t equal to 91 and i'll be reading out the answer and explaining what the answer means so on day t equal to 91 the output for daily sales and g91 are the same so let this i think yeah let this be the point g of 91 and let this be the point g of zero this should be g of 91 and this should be g of zero now we know that our secant line was a line joining these two so our future models will also be expanded in this direction right the tangent remains constant throughout so what the first line says is that the output for daily sales and g91 they coincide right here now for t greater than 91 daily sales are decreasing if you look at the pattern here you know that you notice that the graph is, is increasing throughout it is increasing here it is increasing here as well but the rate at which it increases slows down after g equal to 91 you'll see a sharp increase here and a less sharp increase right here so it says for t greater than 91 daily sales are decreasing and g is increasing because this part that we estimated was for the sharp increase but this remains same throughout so this second line keeps on increasing in that direction meanwhile the actual graph slows down therefore the absolute value of the difference between the actual daily sales which is a blue one and the daily sales predicted by g which is the green one is increasing because as you move ahead the green line will sharply increase but the blue one will keep slowing down so the absolute difference between these will keep on increasing keep on increasing which will give a huge error and that is why the error in the model g increases after t equal to 91 so on your test if you write this answer it will be considered a very precise and full credit answer now i hope the entire frq2 was very clear to you again if there are any doubts or any questions you can always ask me in the comment section below i'll answer them as soon as possible meanwhile take care have a good day